In A Song of Ice and Fire, Old Nan is one of my favorite minor characters. She has the juice to get us through the long night. So Old Nan is a servant, basically the nanny of Winterfell. She's a very old lady that tells very interesting stories. And cracking the cold in Old Nan's stories and to Old Nan could be the key to figuring out just what the fuck is going on. And that's just what we're going to do, or I'm going to try to do. And this is going to be tinfoil, but... So one of the themes of A Song of Ice and Fire is magic versus realism. Interestingly enough, I wrote a chapter for a book called The Thrones Effect, and my chapter was on the magic versus realism in A Game of Thrones, and it was titled, There Is No Magic and the Stories Are Just Stories. And I chose that line because that line comes from Bran, but not only that, Bran is one of the most magical characters in A Song of Ice and Fire, So him to be saying that line is just like weird, but I really chose it because that line is a lie, a clever lie placed in the text by the author. It's George's way of saying, yeah, yeah, nothing to see here, nothing to see with these stories, or is it? Time and time again, the Stark children recant old Nan stories, and we are to believe that they are just crib tales, laughable stories for naive children, but the stories are so much more than that. Maester Lewin has the truth of it, he told himself. Nothing bad was coming to Winterfell, no matter what Jojen said. Bran was relieved, but disappointed too. So long as there was magic, anything could happen. Ghosts could walk, trees could talk, and broken boys could grow up to be knights. But there isn't, he said aloud in the darkness of his bed. There's no magic, and the stories are just stories, and he would never walk, nor fly, nor be a knight. But the more the story progresses, the more we know that that is a lie. There is magic. And the stories aren't just stories. Another common theme in A Song of Ice and Fire is history repeating itself. Time and time again, we have seen where the events from people and places in Westeros mirror or repeat in the current story. So almost every character from the main series has a character that parallels with them, and the same could be said for like certain events. When you read A Song of Ice and Fire, it seems like the magical side of the story is really suppressed at first. And most of the characters in the universe don't even believe the stories. And the author is trying to lead us into the path of uncertainty. But it is from Old Nan, through Bran mostly, that we get all the stories that in my opinion have importance. Old Nan tells us about the Long Night and all the scary stories at the Night Fort. John recalls stories of an ice dragon. We learn about Bran the Builder, Simeon Star Eyes, Serwin of the Mirror Shield. All kinds of stories are told by Old Nan. But these aren't Old Nan stories. These stories are older than Old Nan. I hate your stupid stories. The old woman smiled at him toothlessly. My stories? No, my little lord, not mine. The stories are before me and after me, before you too. Before you too. So when I looked at this quote, I was like, is Old Nan implying that Bran is older than her and it does seem that way look at it the stories are before me and after me and before you too well if they are before and after old nan then it's a given that they would be before a seven-year-old child so why say that unless bran is older than old nan but let's look further into that and old nan and old nan's stories so old nan knows what the fuck she's talking about like she knows There are clues that point to Old Nan being wiser than the fandom give her credit for. One major clue is the Red Comet. When the Red Comet appears in the sky, in every kingdom from Westeros to Essos, people are all thinking it means something different. They give it different names. People think that it's Lannister Red, heralding good things for House Lannister and a good reign for Joffrey or omens of this or that. They're all wrong with the exception of Old Nan. Dragons, she said, lifting her head and sniffing. She was blind and could not see the comet, yet she claimed she could smell it. It be dragons, boy, she insisted. And she was right. The red comet may have represented many things, but it did indeed represent the birth of dragons, and at the time that Old Nan says this, the dragons have just hatched. Daenerys is in the red waist, and there is no way that Old Nan could know about the dragons, but she does. 
Another clue that there is more to old Nan and her stories than what meets the eye is what happens to in brand two of a game of Thrones. Old Nan told him a story about a bad little boy who climbed too high and was struck down by lightning and how afterward the crows came to peck out his eyes. Bran was not impressed. There were crows nests atop the broken tower where no one ever went but him and sometimes he filled his pockets with corn before he climbed up there and the crows ate it right out of his hand. None of them had ever shown the slightest bit of interest in pecking out his eyes. Old Nan tells Bran this story prior to his fall, way prior to his fall, and there are some serious clues and foreshadowing going on here, so let's talk about it. So the Broken Tower is one of the oldest watchtowers in Winterfell. The Broken Tower is where Bran fell, and fun fact, the Broken Tower was indeed struck by lightning hundreds of years ago. His favorite haunt was the Broken Tower, once it had been a watchtower, the tallest in Winterfell, a long time ago, a hundred years before even his father had been born, a lightning strike had set it afire. Do you notice what's going on here with the story? So it resonates in the past, but it also resonates in the present and future. Like that's a loaded statement. So let me explain the cartwheels that my brain is doing. So old Nan tells Bran the story of a boy who climbed the broken tower and was struck by lightning and the crows pecked out his eyes. But is it is indeed a future that Bran is going to face in this very chapter, which at the time is his present. But at the same time, it's a story from the past from hundreds of years ago. So when Bran climbs the tower that was struck by lightning, the broken tower he's pushed by jamie he's pecked by a three-eyed crow but the crow has figuratively taken brand's sight and let me explain what that means so brand knows exactly what happened to him in his coma dream he knows that jamie pushed him had he always been so thin he tried to remember a face swam up at him out of the gray mist shining with light golden the things i do for love it said brand screamed the crow took to the air, cawing. Not that, it shrieked at him. Forget that. You don't need it now. Put it aside. Put it away. It landed on Bran's shoulder and pecked at him, and the shining golden face was gone. Jamie is the lightning bolt in Bran's story. When Bran sees Jamie, he sees him as shining with light. The crow pecks him and tells him to forget it. And when Bran wakes up, he can't remember that Jamie pushed him from the tower, even though before the crow told him to put it away, he knew. So figuratively, the crow has taken his sight. So versions of old Nan's story is true in the past, in the present, and in the future. So the magic is real, and the stories aren't just stories. And maybe decoding old Nan's stories with the past, present, and future, we can find out what's really going on with Bran. So there is this long-standing theory in the A Song of Ice and Fire community that Bran Stark is indeed every Bran and Stark before him, with old Nan implying that Bran is older than her, maybe this is a thing. Maybe he really is every other Brandon before him, or maybe he becomes every Brandon before him, or maybe a Brandon like him is born every century. So we know from just the text that a lot of old Nan stories are, are check out, like most of them check out. Like everything is true, even if it's not literal, like figuratively, it's true. So I want to talk about Bran the Builder. I could tell you the story about Bran and the Builder, old Nan said. That was always your favorite. Thousands and thousands of years ago, Bran and the Builder had raised Winterfell and some said the wall. Bran knew the story, but it had never been his favorite. Maybe one of the other Brandons had liked that story. Sometimes Nan would talk to him as if he were her Brandon, the baby she had nursed all those years ago. And sometimes she confused him with his uncle Brandon, who was killed by the Mad King before Bran was even born. She had lived so long, Mother had told him once, that all the Brandon Starks had become one person in her head. So there's two things that I want to point out from about this quote. First, old Nan confusing Bran with every Brandon she ever knew. We never get anything in the text that would lead us to believe that old Nan has like dementia or forgetfulness. Like 
the text shows quite the opposite. She is the one that remembers and recites all the fucking stories. So there may be something more to this quote than we think. Secondly, I want to talk about Brandon the Builder. So Brandon the Builder is accredited to Building the Wall, Building Winterfell, The High Tower at Old Town, and Storm's End. So... There's a lot of people in the history that are saying, like, this can't all be one person. They, this might be exaggerated. But let's just say that it is one person. So let's look at the legends surrounding the founding of House Durandon, um, Storm's End. So basically, like, the story is that a child of the forest um, and a little boy, the little boy being Brandon the Builder, um, helped construct the castle, helped build Storm's End. Um, I believe it because in A Clash of Kings, when Melisandre wants Davos to row her into Storm's End to, like, let her little goblin shadow baby loose from the cooch, she says this. As Davos unshipped the oars and slid them into the choppy black water, he said, Who rowed you to Renly? There was no need, she said. He was unprotected. But here, this Storm's End is an old place. There are spells woven into the stones, dark walls that no shadow can pass, ancient, forgotten, yet still in place. So if Bran the Builder built Storm's End with the Children of the Forest, um, we know the wall was likely built with the same magic from this quote. Maester Childer's Winter's Kings, or the legends and lineages of the Starks of Winterfell, contain a part of a ballad alleged to tell of a time that Brandon Builder sought the aid of the children while raising the wall. He was taken to a secret place to meet them, but could not at first understand their speech, which was described as sounding like song of stone in a brook, or wind through leaves, or rain upon water. The manner in which Brandon learned to comprehend the speech of the children is a tale in itself, and not worth repeating here, but it's seems clear that their speech originated and drew inspiration from the sounds they heard every day. We also know that he built Winterfell. It says that he built it after the generation long winter known as the Long Night to become the stronghold of his descendants, the Kings of Winter. So this quote is the one that says like he is connected with an improbable number of great works over a span of numerous lifetimes. Like they're like that no guy could live this long. No li guy could live this long to do all of these things. That's why it makes me think like maybe he's reborn every now and then. So we get the legend of the last hero from old Nan. He set out into the Deadlands with a sword, a horse, a dog, and a dozen companions. For years he searched, until he despaired of ever finding the children of the forest in their secret cities. One by one his friends died, and his horse, and finally even his dog, and his sword froze so hard that the blade snapped when he tried to use it, and the others smelled hot blood in him, and came silent on his trail, stalking him with packs of pale white spiders as big as hounds. So the legend is interrupted by a visitor, but the important part is the part that he set out into the deadlands with a sword, a horse, a dog, a dozen companions for years, and he searched until he despaired of ever finding the children of the forest in their secret city. One by one, his friends died and his horse and finally even his dog. So like I know Tony did some shit on this like a while ago about the 12 companions, but Bran is seeking out the children of the forest, just like old Nan's legend of the last hero. Bran has a dog, Summer, Hodor, the horse, Mira, and Jojen. He is at one point helped by the Little, Sam, Gilly, Cold Hands, and they all have like rusted, semi broken swords from the crypts of Winterfell. And we know that in this cave, there is a dragon steel sword, or we at least know the last person to have Dark Sister is in that cave. So it's likely that Bran will leave that cave with dragon steel, aka Valyrian steel, aka Dark Sister, just like the legend of the last hero. So another one of old Nan's tales that applies to the past, present and future. But does this mean that Bran is all the Brandons or not? Like, is this a person that's reborn often out of necessity, like a promised prince, or what is going on? Well, Bran the Builder, in my opinion, was likely the last hero. 
and a three-eyed crow at one point. And Bran is Bran the Builder come again. And for the last time, because Bran is the last green seer. So the name Bran in Welsh actually means raven or crow. So what I think is I think the second son of House Stark every now and then was named Brandon to become a raven. Um, Bran. Uh, Brandon was to be sent to the children every so many years to be trained as a green seer. But the North forgot. They forgot or they ran out of sons to send. We are told the legend of the Night's King at the Night Fort and Old Nan said he was a Stark. Mayhaps his name was Brandon. His name was the Night's King's name was erased from all memory of man. So I could go all into the legends of Old Nan's tales about the Night Fort and how it's likely to repeat. We've already seen the Rat Cook legend repeat with Wyman Manderley in the phrase. But when it comes to the Night King being erased, that is likely how the North forgot what they were supposed to do. They forgot to fill their obligation to the children to keep the realm safe. And somehow, instead of a Brandon, they ended up with a Brendan, a Brendan Rivers, to await the birth of the last Brandon, Bran Stark. So when old Nan came to Winterfell, the Brandon seemed to be like dying off. Like the baby Bran she came to nurse died at three years old. The next Brandon seemed to die around 11 years old. And the next Brandon died at King's Landing at the age of 20, killed by the Mad King. Then at the height of summer, Bran is born. And it's been getting colder ever since. I think Bran was reborn to ally with the children and save men for a second time. The old woman smiled at him toothlessly. My stories? No, my little lord, not mine. The stories are before me and after me, before you too. So you see, there is magic, and the stories aren't just stories. But what do you think? I know this is a little, like, tinfoily, but, like, it's kind of not, though. Like, if you actually think about it, it's kind of not. I don't know. What do you think? Don't forget Direwolf City live stream tonight, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Hope to see you there to discuss Bran Stark's role in the upcoming books, The Winds of Winter. As always, thanks for watching. Thanks to everyone that supports me on Patreon. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please click that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, and join the sweet summer family. Okay, my sweet summer children. Have a good day.